It is my privilege to introduce to you Nadia Bilchik. She is originally from South Africa, but has called the US her home for over 15 years. And I could talk to you for hours about her rich, extensive background. I want to call out a few things. She currently hosts Weekend Passport on CNN. She's an author, written some books. She's a media communications expert. And she's interviewed some names you guys are probably familiar with. Nelson Mandela, Tom Hanks, Meryl Streep, Anthony Hopkins, George Clooney, just to name a few. Most important to us, she's part of our Home Depot family. Our partnership goes beyond eight years, and I will tell you, it is evident that orange blood runs in her veins. You'll see her with the orange dress, um, but she, she feels like family, um, and that's always good. So in HDU, we have a message that we reinforce with leaders consistently, and that is this. Everything you say and do, as well as what you don't say and do, makes a statement about who you are. And Nadia is going to talk to you about just that. Thank you. Well, I get asked so many questions. People ask me, is George Clooney really so sexy? <laughs> and who is the best person you've ever interviewed? And who is the worst person you've ever interviewed? But the question I get asked most is, before a presentation or before I go live on television, do you get? So I am going to share with you a special Nadia technique as an antidote to nerves. What I do is I always go to the corner of the CNN studio and I take a deep breath in and then show us all together on the count of three, what we do is one, wait for it, two, three, huh. It works so well, I can't tell you, great release of nervousness. So now everyone's gonna stand up. Now, I assure you of one thing, nobody is looking at you. They are too busy looking at me, making a complete fool of myself. So lose any self-consciousness, take a deep breath in, and let's all do it on the count of three. So let's go one, two, three, huh, and one, two, three, huh, and one, two, three, huh. Don't you feel better already? But for each of you, unleashing the power of your personal presence means something completely different. For those of you who are in IT, it might mean getting somebody to adopt your suggested application. Nancy was saying she's in renovations. For someone in renovations, it's getting a company to use Home Depot to do the renovations. But for each one of you, the reality is that your presence means something completely different. But what is the definition of the word presence? And the definition that we use in the program is that presence is the qualities of self-assurance, ease, and authenticity that enhance your ability to persuade and influence. So simply put, it's your ability to persuade and influence. And how would you rate your ability to persuade and influence? Your presence is made up of your consistency, your skills and knowledge, your honor and your integrity. But it's also your physical presence. How are you in person in a meeting? Do you walk into work with that kind of life, I love this American expression, sucks. Work sucks and I don't want to be here. Or do you look, now I'm not saying you have to walk around like you're on crack. <laughs> but how do you come to work? Like how do you show up? How do you dress? How do you feel about yourself every day? And then don't forget your virtual presence. How do you come across on email? Have you Googled yourself? And then your interpersonal presence, how do you deal with conflict? And your social presence, do you network? But take a look at this and say, is there any part of this that you need to kick up a notch? Because the reality is that everything, as Michelle said in her wonderful introduction, thank you, Michelle, everything you do and say communicates. Everything you do and say and everything you don't do and say, as we well know. So it all begins the how. We know why we need presence in order to accelerate our careers and make things happen and get the renovation deals and get, if we're in transportation, make sure people comply, or if we're in supply chain, make sure that people report out of stocks on time. We know why we need presence, but the question is how do we take ourselves to the next level? And really that's what the Learning Center is all about, is the how part of it. So we begin by lighting a fire. 
And presence always begins with the F of how I feel about myself. There's a wonderful saying and it goes, there's no greater impediment to getting on well with other people than being ill at ease with yourself. Isn't that a nice one? So think about that. How do you feel about yourself? Now, what if you're having a bad day for whatever reason? Your 401k is now your 201k. In my case, my 101k. Or you've had a fight with the spouse. Or who here has a difficult teenager? Ah, OK. Who here was a difficult teenager? There's hope for us yet, right? But at the end of the day, there are things that cause us to not feel so good about ourselves. And why I say that is that people are attracted to a sense of confidence. It even is more primitive than that. There's a man called Caldini, and he writes about influence. And he says, we are persuaded and influenced by people who make us feel protected. Think about that. That's why confidence is so important. If Nancy is talking to a client or a customer about a renovation, and she doesn't sound confident about what she's talking about, or her team doesn't sound confident, I assure you she won't get the deal, right? John Kehoe wrote a book called Mind Power, and he said, you know, we often think we're only as successful as our last experience. And he said, that's so not true. We are a culmination of our success. Then the other thing is, how do you feel under stress? <laughs> One of the things we do, right, is our stress is a derailer. Michelle said, and I said earlier, that everything you do communicates. And what's interesting is different personality styles react in different ways. And if you haven't been to a class yet on personality styles, it's so critical. Because the more you understand yourself and what happens to you under stress in difficult situations, the better you will be able to deal with it and the more you can unleash the power of your personal presence. Equally important in presence is your genuine interest in others. Now, in our networking classes in the Building Relationships for Career Success, we look at how to have a conversation with somebody so that it leads to collaboration. Because really, your ability to show genuine interest in others starts off with a connection. And then how do I have a real meaningful conversation? And ultimately, how do I build a network of collaboration? And the reality is that networking is as much about being a go-giver as it is about being a go-getter. And what stops people doing this is very interesting. Think about it. What stops me having a better relationship with all of my colleagues? And we go into a lot more detail in the classes on this, is that often stops us. What if I approach Tom? Or what if I approach Lloyd? Or what if I approach Jim? And he doesn't treat me in the way that I would like. So I know you've heard the quote, courage is not the absence of fear. It's the taking of action despite the fear. And this really applies to so many levels of in our lives. What would you like to be doing right now? What are you not doing because of that simple moment? Because of that simple moment of I'm not going to because what if? Now, what is your neuro association with reaching out to somebody? Because I can assure you that if in your mind you go, I'm not going to because it's going to be uncomfortable, I'm not going to do it, you will not do it. So how do we change that? We shift that by going, I'm going to reach out to Ben. It doesn't feel that comfortable. How am I going to phrase it? I'm not going to walk in and say, Ben, I need a job. Because it's automatically he might go, but I'm going to say, Ben, I'd appreciate some advice or guidance on. So I'm already making it easier for myself. Then what if Ben does not have time for me? What if he isn't as kind and warm as I would like? How do I feel? Rejected. Who here in this room hasn't experienced some rejection at some point of their lives? We want to know you, we want to study you, and you, we want to know what medication you're taking. <laughs> OK, everybody's experienced some rejection on some level. So really, there are two aspects to all communication, in the same way that there are two aspects to a rocket launch. In a rocket launch, you have the rocket, you have the delivery system. In communication, we have what we say and how we say it. So I know we've covered a lot in a very short time, but I ask you all to think of your presence as physical, how you stand, how you walk, how you look, how you smile, how you dress, as interpersonal, how you deal with conflict and stress, and can you press the pause button, as virtual, what is your virtual brand or your virtual reputation, and finally, don't forget socially, do I network, do I have access, or are certain things stopping me? And what I want to share with you is sometimes your next opportunity will happen unexpectedly. But you can't wait for the opportunity to become the person. You have to become the person 
and then the opportunity finds you. And this is what happened during the World Cup. All right, so people from all over the world have crowded into South Africa. And those of you watching anywhere in the world are hearing coverage from South Africa. You're probably hearing some terms that you're not familiar with. I know I am. So I asked to join me Nadia Bilchik, our editorial producer, who is from South Africa, an anchor from South Africa. You know every piece of lingo. And I'm so excited to teach you, Josh Lev, something. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, that's, a, that's a first. Well, we're going to start off with the only expression that I'm actually familiar with here. All right? Take a look at this one. How's it? Help me out. Hello, how's it? Now, how's it is a great South African expression because it's really a combination of hello, how are you? And we go, hello, how's it, Josh? Which means, how are you doing? Okay. And it means, hello, how are things so going in your says, life? So I meet someone, they say, hello, how's it? Do I say, I'm fine, how's yes, it? Or do I say, just You just say, how's it, how's it? Just how's it, how's it? And okay. it's everything. It just says it all. And it's <laughs> universal <laughs> right. across demographic lines, color lines. Everybody knows how's it. Gets a lot harder from here. Now I have no clue what we're talking about. <laughs> What's that? Aish is an expression of exclamation, which is either aish or aish. So let's say you see a great goal, you go okay. aish. aish, and it just means, oh my goodness, in other words, oy vey. But what if, oh, oy vey, oy vey. see this one I can, this one I'm familiar with. Aish so if it's aish. good or it's bad, you can go aish. aish. All right, let's do the next one here. <laughs> Aina, it's Aina. sore. Oh, that looks Aina. Josh, you've hurt your knee. Aina. Now, if I'm in pain, I go Aina. And if you're in pain, I go Aina. So Aina's a bad thing. It's like Aina agony. Aina is pain. Agony. Sore. Agony. Aina. Aina. All right, now help me out with this one. Lekker. Now, lekker in Afrikaans makes a candy or a sweet. So lekker is awesome. It's oh, awesome. awesome. It's lekker. It's so, amazing. It's fantastic. That game was lekker. That jaw lekker. was lekker. Lekker. You look lekker, my China. That's a lekker tie. Oh, you look lekker. Does she look like <laughs> lekker? Lekker. Yes, and the whole World Cup has been a lekker experience <laughs> for the whole country. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, now one more, which is the ultimate stump. Noit. No, I can't Noit. believe it. Not possible. He did that game. He did that. Noit. Like no way in like a bad no way. Like no way. No way, either good or bad. You All see, right. that's why these things, noit, I don't believe you. You know how people say, I don't believe you. Noit. So help me out. Noit? Noit. Noit. Noit, my China, my buddy, my booty, my friend. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, there's a list of a lot more. We next week, we have to do the South African handshake. That, I have to teach you the South African handshake. That's coming next week. There are week. things that are very universal to oh my South God. Africa. And not South Africa, South Africa. South Africa. South Africa. I can't even say the country right. I, I posted a long list of lingo for you right here at my Facebook page, Josh Lev CNN. I'm also tweeting it out, Josh Lev CNN. Go ahead and let us know your favorite South African expressions. Nadia, thank you. Buy a donkey. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm so <laughs> lost. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm Michelle Simmons, and I have thoroughly enjoyed this meeting. I always do every time I come, but I have learned that your personal presence is your physical and visual, and also your social, so be confident and do not have that fear, the false evidence that appears real, and I will continue to light the fire. I've learned that so much. Thank you. Um, I thought it was a very interesting class today, and um, kind of learned that don't assume that uh, everyone has bad intent, that assume people have positive intent, so kind of uh, will disarm you, I guess, a little bit when you uh, tend to get angry. People have more confidence in those who make them feel strong and protected. And even as women, even though we may be considered the weaker sex, we have the ability to make even the strongest men and CEOs and everyone else feel confident and safe.